So let's go ahead and start off with just praying in tongues. I know she just opened up in prayer, but let's uh, invite the Spirit with, with tongues because we can utter things. We don't know what it is, and it's awesome. So, yes, worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. Be magnified tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you're bringing forth your word and you're giving me the utterance and um, anointing that I need to be able to speak to them tonight, Lord. I have prepared, but Lord, I pray that we go in the direction that you want us to go in. Amen. Okay. So close to me. <laughs> yes, because it's nerve-wracking. Anyway, so um, tonight I want to talk about prayer. Um, this is a huge topic. So, you know, there's going to be lots of different points and different things. You know, you can go in so many different directions in prayer. Um, I have just a couple, but I encourage you guys to dive into this subject. It's so powerful, and it is really the heart of your relationship with God. All right, so title is Position, Relationship, Prayer. It's kind of like reading, writing, and arithmetic. Not all of them start with P. It's fine. All right, so James 5, 16, at the end of that, um, I'm just going to go to the second half of that verse, um, and it says, the earnest, heartfelt, this is an amplified version, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I want that. Yes. I want to have tremendous power in my prayers. Yes. And I think we all are striving for that same goal. Yes. All right. So we know that Jesus had that quality. He had effectual, heartfelt prayer. He walked in dominion on this earth. His prayers made tremendous power available to him. And when he prayed, God moved. Not because he was God's son, but because he was a righteous man. So that's so exciting because we can have that same position. We have that same position in him. And that same power is available to us. So I want to start off with talking about our position. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So, that is... Well, I'll go ahead. Hold on. Carry on. So, we have been given the same position of righteousness that Jesus has. We, when we got born again, our spirits instantly became whole, became pure, and became righteous. We are, we are right standing in God. That is an amazing statement that we, right now, no matter what we've done, no matter who we were in the past, we can stand in front of Jesus, in front of God the Father, pure and holy. Amen. We have His righteousness. You, and understanding your position, that you're seated with Him, and the Holy Spirit of God dwells and lives in you, Amen. is where the power comes from. So in Ephesians 6, or sorry, Ephesians 2, 6 through 10, I'm just going to read this um, through, just talking about, you know, it's uh, validating the statement of we're seated with him. So, because, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. 
And it, this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So it's really the, the beginning portion of that scripture where it says where we're seated. But I threw the rest of it in because it's just so good that you have to realize that we were created new. Each one of us is a brand new creation in Christ. When we accepted him, um, it, it was nothing that we, no one's ever seen. We are a new spirit. We are made holy. We're pure. And you need to focus on that because you have the mind where constantly is telling you about things you did or whatever, but this is the truth, and the truth mm -hmm. is is that you are new, you. and you have tremendous power available to you. Yeah. So in Colossians 2, 9 through 10, um, this is just validating the statement that God lives in you and dwells in you. For him, for in him, who is Jesus, the whole fullness, and this is in the Amplified Version, because it's just, this scripture is so powerful, you guys. So, for in him, the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you, this is us, are in him, made full and having come to the fullness of life. In Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reached full spiritual stature and he is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic being principality and power that scripture you guys could rest in a really long time that just my spirit has full stature my spirit is already made complete right now that i have that capability of saying peace be still to the storm and the waves have to obey me because God lives in me and I have that same ability. I have God on the inside of me and his stature is my stature. I'm seated with him. We're seated in heavenly places and when you pray, you need to pray from that position. There, nothing can stand up against you because you have the name of Jesus. And so praying from that place is where you need to start. There's nothing that can stand against you. God's on the inside of you. And when you spend time with him, which I'll talk about in a little bit, when you spend time with him, it gives you that assurance. All right, so we have supernatural Holy Ghost power on the inside of us. So Hebrews 4, 16, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help, to help us in our time of need. So that's the same thing. You know where you're sitting. You know who's on the inside of you. Nothing is in the way. There's nothing stopping you from going to the throne of God and asking Him for wisdom or asking Him for guidance, asking Him for peace. There's nothing in the way st that's stopping you from getting the promises of God. But, like Brother Hagen says, to make the word work, you have to get excited about it. Because <laughs> it's real. Amen. And uh, diving into just that one scripture alone, knowing that God's on the inside of you, should make you excited. That's it right. should make you be like, God, oh, there's nothing that can stop me because I'm awesome. God's <laughs> in me. And I know Him. Right. You know, 1 John 2.20. I'm oh, sorry, um... Just John 14, 17 says, I know the spirit of truth. You know him. He's in me. I know too many Christians walk around not knowing the plan of God for their life or what the next step is because they don't spend time in prayer. And because we all can know the next step. God desires us to go deep Amen. into the deep. For he has given us freedom to come to him and receive we, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Not only do we have him on the inside of us, but we're also made in his image. Amen. 
He's a spirit. I am a spirit. We're all spirits. Genesis 126 says that he says, let us make man in our image. Amen. And I really think that that's not just talking about the natural realm. That's talking about spiritually. We're made in the same image of God. He is a spirit. We are a spirit. And John uh, 4, 24. Let me turn that really quick. But it says... Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they, sorry, it's 23 and 24. For they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the fact that I'm a spirit has to become so real to me. I'm a spirit first. First I'm a spirit, then I'm a body, and I'm a mind. You know, the spirit realm needs to be more real to me than the natural realm. So in 2 Kings, I just want to give an illustration of that. We're going to go in the Old Testament, 2 Kings 2, oh, sorry, 2 Kings 6. This is... Um, a story that everyone's really familiar with. What was it, 2 Kings? 2 Kings 6, 16, and 17, but I'm going to back up to 15. So it said, When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? So first response, he panicked, right? This was Elijah's servant. Um... The servant asks, and Elijah comes to him and he says, Do not be afraid. Amen. The prophet answered, Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Amen. And Elijah prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so that he might see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. <laughs> so that's just a really cool example because... Elijah's servants only saw what the natural showed him, which was a giant army surrounding their house or city, the city where they were. And Elisha, when he ran to him in this panic, Elisha first of all said, don't be afraid. But he also already had such a connection with God that he knew in his spirit that God was with him, Amen. that God had already surrounded him with chariots of fire. He was at that place where it's like, God, open his eyes so he can see these things too, because that's, I already know that. But he was already de developed in his relationship with the Lord that he didn't have to panic about it. Because he could have been like, oh Lord, what are we going to do? The chariots, God, you, you knew this was coming. What, you know, but instead he's like, God, you knew this was coming. I know that there's an answer. And so God show him that same thing because there, there's two realms, the spirit realm and the natural realm. And the servant couldn't see the spirit realm. But Elisha, without even looking out the window, saw the natural realm. The supernatural realm. Thank you. That happens. You say the wrong thing, but everyone understands. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, when... That's just the place that we need to get so secure in right. is in Amen. the supernatural realm because that is where we are. The natural realm is not as real as the supernatural realm. And that sometimes you, people are like, how could that be? This is what I see. But it's like this is, this is where we need to take it back to and we need to be secure in the fact that the supernatural, the spirit realm is more real and that's the reason why people can see their healing before it takes place because they can see in the spirit just like he did there was already chariots of fire standing around mm -hmm. and he you can see your healing you can see your provision because yeah. god's word says so so you can see those things be developed in his word or in his promises and all all the good stuff that's good. I like that. um uh, when that takes place, you can really start getting kingdom business taken care of. Because 
When you go to pray, your reality is that you are seated at the right hand of the Father and that you speak and create. You have power over the enemy and you are already victorious. So that's the same thing. You already know you have victory and God's never taken by surprise. It says, I'll say it later, but he knows the things you need before you ask of him. You, you're not going to go to him and be like, God, my car broke down. I need $800 to fix it right now. And he knew that that was going to happen eternity ago. And he knew that if you went to him, he has the answer for you. Uh, but to have, to, but, bleh, sorry, but to fully have the solidity or foundation of this position uh, that we already possess. It's something that's already there. Not everybody understands it, but we, we possess that position of being seated. We have to have a relationship with God. That's right. So now, second thing, it's relationship. Um, to be able to operate in your full potential, you have to spend time with the Father. You need to fellowship. The word prayer has so much attached to it, but most of all, when someone's like, oh, I'm going to pray, they're asking God for something or they're begging God for something. You know, it's not always about somebody who's like, I'm really just going to go and spend time at the feet of Jesus. Like, generally speaking, when the world says prayer, they're thinking, last resort, I'm going to go to God, <laughs> ask him for this miracle because there's no other way. Um, but first of all, it's communion um, with God. And that is what makes tremendous power available to you when you get his word on the subject. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because if you have his word, nothing can stop that word of God. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jesus is our example. He was demonstrating to us how to operate as a man on this earth that was anointed by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, that's just really powerful because... It's not, he, he was a son of God, but he was operating on earth not as the son of God. Right. He was a man. And he was showing us in every area, every step he took, he was showing us how we can be the same. That's right. If we spend time with God, if we fellowship with him, we can get those same answers. Amen. Um, let me... Ah, oh, that's fine. Um, so, Jesus since he is awesome, uh, told us in Luke 18, 1. I'm going to go ahead and go to that scripture. I don't have it in my notes. So Luke 18, 1. We're just going to read the first verse. Uh, that then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I'm not going to go through the prayer, the parable because the whole point of the parable was that sentence that we should always pray and not give up. Um, a lot of people go into this, this parable and they, they pick it apart and they try to f figure out so you can go to God how many times or whatever because he's the, the judge and, and stuff. But that's the core of what that parable means is that we should always pray. Amen. And not give up. Um, so, uh, well, and then there's, I'll do uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, which, other than Jesus wept, is probably the next shortest scripture. <laughs> Pray continually, and that's the scripture. But those two, you know, you need to have three witnesses in the Bible so you can put your foundation around it. I have one more, but... There's plenty that says you need to pray all the time. But this one, pray continually. You know, uh, continually means don't stop. And it's not saying you have to pray 24 hours a day, 24-7. You're like, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I have to pray, I have to pray, I have to pray. Because it's what it says continually. But it's really making sure that every day, you don't miss a day, that you make a connection with God. That spending time hearing what he has to say about everything, um, developing that attitude of when you're in the car, when you're when you're sitting with the kids, whatever, that he's there 
and you can talk to him. And you're teaching your kids how to talk to God because he is there all the time, just like anybody else is. Um, he loves to talk with you and fellowship. He wants you to continually be aware of him. Amen. He is always there, ready to talk and commune with you. And the more you pray in the Spirit, the more sensitive you become to Him. That's really powerful, and I love that because sometimes when you're like, you feel like I'm really not getting anywhere, and you're like, but the Word says that if I pray in the Spirit, I am developing myself in God. I'm, I'm developing my prayer language. I'm developing hearing Him, praying in the Spirit, because I'm talking directly to Him. And even though I don't always I don't always understand that, but sometimes when you're praying in the spirit, you get a knowing on the inside. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily get audible voices, and you don't you know or voice just one <laughs> audible <laughs> voice <laughs> from God. Because <laughs> if you get voices, probably really bad idea. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but when you're praying in the spirit, you can pray in the spirit talking. You can pray in the spirit speaking the word. You can pray in the Spirit speaking in tongues, but those things are developing your spirit to hear Him, to recognize His voice in your life, so that when He does tell you to stop or to go or whatever, it's like this peaceful feeling or this not-so-peaceful feeling. You're like, okay, I'm getting comfortable with the fact that I know Him. Um, because when you're praying in the Spirit, you're making the spiritual realm your normal. You really need to get to that place where the spirit's more natural than the, than the normal, than the, the physical. The spiritual realm is your normal realm. That's what you operate in all the time. I am a spirit first, and that's my reality. Continuous prayer, don't give up. That's what Jesus said. Always pray and don't give up. So, in Luke 6, 12, my forte is not writing. So, it doesn't always flow perfect, but it's really great. Luke 6, 12. Um, um, this is just showing you just an example of something Jesus did. Um, so, it says, verse 12. Uh, One of those days, Jesus was now, went out to the mountainside to pray. And spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated as apostles. And then it lists the 12 uh, apostles. And there's no coincidence in the fact that Jesus just played, prayed all night long <laughs> and got the 12 names. There was a lot more than 12 people following him. He needed to be very specific. It's incredibly important that we go to God. And yeah, maybe you lose a night of sleep, but you can take a nap the next day, <laughs> right? In the boat? In the boat. Right. Because you're not worried about anything. <laughs> but that's just an example, because Jesus went to the feet of God. Right. He went to God and he said, this is the decision I know. But he knew when to do it. He knew how. He knew where. He knew who. Those names were written uh, in heaven on the foundation of the temple. Sorry. Anyway, so he had to be specific. And he was operating as a man. He needed to go to God to get that answer. So prayer gives you tremendous knowledge. You can know the exact answer to your situation yes. when you go to him. And so... That's just one of the times where he prayed all night. But, you know, maybe you prayed an hour and you really feel like you got an answer. That's great. Maybe you didn't and you need to pray another hour. Or you need to take this to the Lord a couple days. It's, you know, it's saying pray and don't stop. Don't stop until you feel like you got that release from God that, on this, the situation that you're looking for. Um, time with God is essential to prayer. Jesus fellowship with the Father until he knew exactly what the Father would say and do. He knew God's heart and his ways. Jesus prayed all night, and at the end of the night, he knew he had knowledge from God on what to do. I already said that. Um, so he said himself, uh, he's, Jesus said himself that he only does what he sees the Father doing. Mm -hmm. 
And again, that's not with his natural eye. He's not sitting there praying to God and in heaven, seeing God pick the 12 disciples necessarily. It's, it's his spirit. He's seeing it in his heart. And we all have that same ability to see what God wants us to do, what God's doing in our heart. Amen, that's good. This, it's, it's the spirit. It's the same thing with, like we said, we saw with, in Second Kings that the Father opened his eyes. He can open our eyes too. We can pray, like in Ephesians, that you open the heart, that you open the eyes of our understanding. Amen. We have two sets of eyes. We have a spiritual eyes. We have physical eyes. And we need to see things out of the Spirit because it's much better. Because nothing changed in the natural. The armies of God were all, always surrounding them. Mm -hmm. And Elisha knew it. So we can know the same thing. I mean, it, the Word tells us that we're protected. And it tells us that we're, we're healed. And it tells us all these things. And that is the truth. Right. Same thing with that story. The armies of God were, were there. That was, that was real, and the, the, he ran to the window and was afraid because he couldn't see that, because he didn't spend time with God. But we have that ability. Amen. All right, Ephesians 6, 18. So this is our third scripture that says always pray. Um, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying. So that's the keep on praying, continuous Keep going, praying for all the Lord's people, for the Lord's saints. Um, so this is, again, showing us we need to continually be in that atmosphere. And that scripture, it's like, how do you pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests? be uh, with this in mind being always alert and always keep on praying for all of God's people <laughs> you're like how is that possible unless I am praying 24 7 constantly but that's what's so awesome about the spirit it's that uh, even though there's a lot of saints and a lot of people that you'd have to pray for praying in the spirit gives you that ability the verse is telling us that when we pray in the Spirit, we can pray for all those things because what is happening is we are speaking God's holy language, praying for exactly what He needs in the moment. That's good. Being a willing vessel, that's what God wants because if every believer does this, then all is being done. You are praying for all things and all men, because every, we're, we're all part of the body. Amen. So when I'm praying in the Spirit, and I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm praying for. You're praying for somebody, or you're praying for a situation. You could be praying for thousands of people, mm -hmm. and you are doing the work of the Lord. Amen. We need to get out of our needs and into kingdom business, because His Word says that He knows what we need before we ask Him. So let's pray for the things he needs us to pray for, and he takes complete, uh, complete care of us. Matthew 6, 33, 34, But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So in that scripture, it's just saying... Do my work, and I will make sure you have everything. That's a really powerful Amen. statement that Jesus said. Amen. And it's a command that we're not to worry. That's a tough one to swallow. <laughs> so um, Philippians 4, 6 also says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, uh, every situation, by prayer and petition, so there's a, a lot of times you see that where it's prayer and petition, prayer and supplication. You see that a lot because it's two different things. Prayer, communion with God. You're spending time with Him. You're, you're there getting His voice, or hearing His voice, getting His knowledge and what you need to do. And supplication is you're asking Him for something or you're requesting. Like um, over here in Ephesians 6.18, it says prayer and requests. So it needs to be two different things because it's okay to go to God and ask him for things. Jesus said, ask and receive, knock and the door will be open, seek and you will find. And so 
it's not like, you know, obviously you don't condemn yourself for going to God and asking for something, but we need to separate sometimes our prayer time with our, or not necessarily separate, but make sure you have that moment with him where you're, you're listening to what he has to say. Because sometimes he'll just tell you what it, what it is and you're like, oh, I didn't have to ask for it because God, you knew what I needed. <laughs> but it's just so important to how often people just say, okay, I'm going to pray about that. They go to God, God, I really need this money. Thank you for your provision. Your word says that this is, um, that you provide all my needs. And then you walk away. And he's like, I had something to tell you. I told, I have the solution. I know where the money is, but you wouldn't let me talk. You wouldn't let me tell you. You can't just ask him. You have to have prayer with it. You need to sit there and listen to the answer because that's how you get, how you get somewhere. So Jesus commanded us not to worry. And worry is a nasty thing. That's, I mean, Jesus is our Lord and he commanded us not to worry. And so anytime that you feel like you are worrying, you're like, okay, wait, hold on. First of all, prayer is the opposite of worry. Prayer is the antidote to worry. So if I'm, I can't pray, I, I mean, if I can't worry, I have to pray. God, I'm going to give God my concerns and then I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to spend time with him, get his wisdom. And when you're communicating with God, you're telling him the things that you might be worried about or you're not worried about, you're praying about. You're looking to him and who he is. You're meditating on his word is a form of prayer. You are communicating with him about your promise, his promises, and you are making his word bigger in your life than the problem. So it's that you're going back to, okay, spiritually, my spiritual reality is that God is greater. The spiritual reality is that God provides all my needs according to his riches and glory. So you don't have an issue, a money issue anymore. Because you're so secure in the fact that it doesn't matter until it's the day of the deadline. God takes care of your needs. So you can't worry about it. But if you keep worrying about it, it's tying his hands. Because you're, uh, you're not mulling over his word. You're not talking about You're not securing yourself in him. Trusting. Yeah, trusting. Um, and it's just learning how to walk with him and commune with him. And go into the deep things of God. Becoming one with him just like Jesus was or is. Um, I'm going to go to let's see, 1 Corinthians 2.12. This is just referencing that same statement. but or, Sorry, 2.10. But and it says, no eye has seen before, backing up a little bit, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what the, God has prepared for those who love him. So many people take that scripture and they're like, oh, well, I can't know the things of God because like it says here, nobody's seen, nobody's heard. But verse 10 says, but God has revealed it to us by Amen. his spirit. Right. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. That's really powerful because it's saying that my spirit is connected with his spirit and it, his spirit, the spirit, searches all things, even the deep things of God. So those things, which are also secrets, um, are made, uh, are revealed to me. Mm -hmm. So I can rest also in the fact that I know him. I know him and his spirit reveals, what did it say? What God has prepared for those who love him. Okay. All right. So um, let's look at James 5. We open with the scripture, um, James 5, 16. But I'm going to continue 
with that. So the end of five, well, first let's go to verse 13, just part of it, but it's just saying, if, uh, is any of you in trouble, he should pray. And that's very specific saying that person who's in trouble should pray. There are moments, yes, there's a prayer of agreement and you can't have people hook up with you, but you can't ask somebody to solely pray for you and you not pray for yourself because there are lots of things that God can only tell you about your life and about your situation. So you have to pray. I was listening to Keith Moore and he said, the next verse says, is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. And he's saying that people, so many people, they're like, okay, I'm in trouble. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? We pray for me. And he's like, and if so, and this next verse, it says, let him sing songs of praise. And he's like, okay, I'm happy you sing. <laughs> you know, that it doesn't work like that. I can't, dad, sing for me. I'm so happy. You know, it just, it, <laughs> but it doesn't, it, it, it's just giving you that awareness that you need to make sure that you're doing it for yourself. All right, back down to, so the end of, 16 says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. I read that in Amplified earlier. but um, And then verse 17 says, Elijah was a man just like us. Amen. So that's really awesome because Elijah, like it says right here, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So right there, he, he specifically was saying he's a man just like us because we have no excuse. We are created, like I said, in the image and likeness of God. We have all of God on the inside of us, and we need to pray from a position of authority. That's what Elijah did. He prayed to God, but if you read uh, in 1 Kings about that, it's... He, it just it talks about Elijah, and then he says, and he got a word from the Lord saying, go to Ahab and, or, yeah, Ahab and tell him that it's going to rain. So it almost seems like he's just doing his business, and God's like, okay, it's going to rain now. And he's like, oh, great, I'm going to go tell him. But what it's saying here is that he spent time earnestly praying and got a word from the Lord. That's good. That's um, but he was just like us. He communed with God, and he was able to change the weather, not just for a short time, but for three and a half years. And then he was able to change it back, because that's cool. <laughs> but Jesus did the same thing. He had power over the wind and the waves. He had authority over. He had dominion on this earth, which is what we have. Um, but the cool thing was Elijah wasn't a perfect guy. He dealt with fear. And he did some weird things, like run, you know, he he did this awesome thing on Mount Carmel, and brought down fire from heaven. And then Jezebel's like, "I'm gonna kill you," and he runs and hides in a cave. And he's like, "God, kill me now, <laughs> please." I mean, that's like two of the most opposite things you can, you know. He had this boldness, and then he runs away from this girl, but. <laughs> it's just cool because we don't have to, you know, we might have moments of fear, but like Elisha said, our first response needs to be, do not be afraid for the army who is with us is greater. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you in spending more time with learning and talking to God and less time with your needs. He loves you and he will take care of you completely. Get secure in that truth and you will find it a lot easier to let go. Because the more you develop that spiritual realm, being aware of the spiritual realm, it's so much easier to, you might get hit with something and it won't even affect you because you are so solid on the foundation of who you are in Christ, Amen. Jesus. Um, so remember to be secure in your position, develop your relationship and pray from a higher place than you ever have before. Jesus said, 
whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. That's a very powerful statement. And that, I mean, that gives you so much authority. Okay, I'm going to do a demonstration that probably is not going to make me very comfortable. But I just kind of want to give you guys an idea of just something that one of my teachers did. And it gives you a, an idea of praying or praying in faith. Praying. All right. So let's just say you're like, I'm going to pray in the spirit for 30 minutes and it's going to be awesome. You're not very jazzed. You don't feel like praying. Whatever. So you start praying, right? And you're like, and you look at your watch, you're like, five minutes. What's on Facebook? And so you're not really focused, right? You're praying in the spirit. Like I was just talking in tongues. But I'm not really getting a lot done with that prayer. Let's just be honest because I'm not focused. I'm not hooking up with myself. So when you're praying in spirit, and this is what I do. And it's, it's, it's so exciting. And you need to make it exciting because it's like, so you're going to, so you are praying in the spirit and you're hooking up with whatever you're praying for completely. So what are we doing? We're jumping in with faith. So you need to get excited about praying in the Spirit. I'm going to pray, and it's going to be awesome. So I'm going to be like, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, and you go at it. Go at that prayer, and you get excited about it. And you can, you know what? You're praying God's holy language, so you can agree with it. Yes, Lord, I thank you for that. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Father, you are good. You are working mighty works for me. Let me tell you guys, when you get into prayer like that, it goes so much faster. <laughs> and you get stuff done because you're able to hook up with your prayer. That's right. That's right. It's so important to do that because it can be, I wish I never, my teacher said, it's never difficult to do the things of God. People just say that and it makes it harder for them because they're constantly repeating Oh, man, it's so hard to get in the spirit. Don't you? It's so difficult, man. But it's not. It's easy. And when I just did that, I jumped in the spirit. And by faith, I'm doing that whether I feel like it or not. And so if that's, you're hooking up. You're hooking up with yourself. So that was the end. And... Uh, you saved the best for the last. Thanks. That was a good word. I was going to start with that, but... It takes a lot of courage to do it. She does it really awesome, but it just gives you perspective. Amen, that's yeah. right. So that's let's word. also do the same thing with our meditating, our scripture. Um, I didn't bring the papers, but I have the scripture that we're going to meditate on. 1 John 2.20, because this is everything that is connected. Oh. All right, so 1 John 2.20 says, But you, who's that? That's us. Have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Huh? What? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I thought you were raising your hand. <laughs> so anytime you need to give yourself a boost, say that scripture. We're going to meditate it in our groups. Because that's powerful. I know all truth. We all know all truth. That's what the word says. I'm anointed and I know all truth. So when I go and do, okay, where's my position? I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm seated. I'm, and then I'm going to pray from that place. I'm praying from that higher place because I know that. I know the truth. I am anointed and I have the ability to pray from that place in Jesus. It's awesome.